in 1952, an American magazine called Theater Arts featured Madhubala, titling the article The Biggest Star in the World, reflecting on her beauty and success in an era devoid of the internet and social media. Madhubala's allure and achievements were the talk of the town despite the absence of online platforms. And despite numerous offers from Hollywood, she rejected them all, solidifying her status as an iconic figure in Indian cinema. Dubbed as the Indian Marilyn Monroe, her charm, stardom and acting prowess elevated her to one of the highest paid actors in India. Madhubala also played the lead in India's first horror film, Mehal, and in the opulent epic, Mughle Azam for which she was paid a hefty paycheck of 1 lakh rupees, which is roughly 8.5 crores when adjusted for inflation today. Legend has it that Madhubala's mere presence on set was enough to uplift everyone's spirits with her infectious smile. Such was her enchanting beauty that during the filming of Rail Ka Dibba, Shammi Kapoor found himself so captivated that he momentarily forgot his lines. Throughout her illustrious two-decade-long career, Madhubala graced the silver screen in a staggering 73 films, proving herself to be more than just a pretty face. Movies like Mehal, Neel Kamal, Chalti Ka Naam Gadi, Half Ticket and Amar Prem, among so many others, stand as a testament to her exceptional acting abilities. Her portrayal in Mughal -e Azam was so iconic that the costumes she adorned in the film became synonymous with the word Anarkali. Perhaps destiny had a major hand in Madhubala's life, being born on February 14th, a day celebrated worldwide as Valentine's Day. Yet, fate did not seem to smile upon her in matters of love. Today we delve into the captivating life and times of the enigmatic Madhubala, cherished dearly by her fans and colleagues alike. Madhubala, originally named Mumtaz Jahan Delvi, came into the world on February 14, 1933 in Delhi, as the fifth child of Ataullah Khan and Aisha Begum. Despite her natural talents in singing and recitation, her conservative family, particularly her father Ataullah Khan, viewed her interests with disdain. Times grew even more challenging when Madhubala's father lost his job, plunging the family into the depths of poverty, struggling to scrape by and unable to afford even a single nutritious meal each day. Ataullah Khan was determined to prevent his family from falling into destitution. In a bid to alleviate their financial problems, he arranged for young Mumtaz to work as a singer at All India Radio. One fateful day, as she lent her melodious voice to the airwaves, Rai Bahadur Chunnilal, the general manager of Bombay Talkies, took notice of the young talent. He saw potential in her and wasted no time in introducing her to Devika Rani, the esteemed head of Bombay Talkies. Devika Rani was so enchanted by Mumtaz that she resolved to cast her in the 1942 film Basant, offering Madhubala a stipend of 150 rupees for her role. Basant proved to be a resounding success. In a bid to change their fortunes, Ataullah Khan relocated his entire family to Bombay, the city of dreams, with the hope that young Mumtaz would find better opportunities there. After tirelessly canvassing various film studios, Ranjit Studios finally signed the budding talent to a five-film contract, albeit at a meagre salary of 350 rupees. She was credited with the pseudonym Baby Mumtaz, and thus Madhubala spent her formative years amidst the glitz and glamour of the film industry. <laughs> Ataullah Khan assumed the role of her manager, overseeing every aspect of her career, including the films she accepted. A strict authoritarian, 
Ataullah Khan tightly controlled Madhubala's social interactions, handpicking her friends and dictating her every movement. Unconcerned with the artistic merit of the project, he prioritized financial gain above all else, compelling Madhubala to accept any film that offered decent remuneration. Despite this, Madhubala remained dedicated and punctual, signing on for 24 films in one fell swoop to secure her family's financial stability. Lacking formal education, Madhubala's father hired a home tutor to impart English lessons as her popularity soared in the film industry. It became apparent that Ataullah Khan wielded complete authority over Madhubala's life, which adversely impacted her romantic endeavors. I have given my father to my father, but I don't have any draft. And if I don't have any money to pay, then... During her upbringing in Delhi, Mumtaz formed a close bond with a boy named Latif. Legend has it that upon their departure to Bombay, Mumtaz bestowed upon Latif a red rose as a token of her affection. While Latif pursued a career as an IAS officer, Mumtaz's star ascended in Bombay, where she encountered her first true love. <laughs> In 1949, amidst the filming of Mehel, a captivating chemistry ignited between Madhubala and the writer-director Kamal Amrohi. However, Kamal Amrohi was not only married, but also a father. Although some reports suggest that Ataullah Khan was aware of Amrohi's marital status, he seemingly condoned the romantic involvement between Amrohi and his daughter. Kamal Amrohi harbored intentions of marrying Madhubala and proposed a union where she would assume the role of his second wife. However, Madhubala vehemently opposed this arrangement, insisting that Amrohi divorce his first wife. Their relationship was further strained by Amrohi's stringent and controlling demeanour, ultimately leading to their parting. In 1951, Madhubala found solace in the arms of actor Prem Nath during the filming of Badal. Their relationship flourished and Prem Nath expressed a desire to marry Madhubala. However, their differing religious backgrounds posed a significant obstacle. Prem Nath urged Madhubala to convert to Hinduism, a proposition she staunchly rejected, exacerbated by Ataullah Khan's staunch opposition to interfaith marriages. Yielding to her father's wishes, Madhubala reluctantly ended her romance with Prem Nath, marking the conclusion of a fleeting yet poignant love affair spanning six months. In 1944, Madhubala first crossed paths with the legendary Dilip Kumar Sahab on the sets of Jwar Bhata. However, it was during the filming of Tarana in 1951 that their relationship blossomed into something more. Their love story became the talk of the town, culminating in an official engagement that symbolized the epitome of romance in Madhubala's life. <laughs> Their affectionate bond led the entire film industry to perceive them as a married couple. Yet, the greatest obstacle to this love story emerged in the form of Madhubala's father, Ataullah Khan. Rumours circulated that Khan harboured ambitions of launching his own production banner and envisioned Dilip Kumar exclusively working under his banner. However, Dilip Sahab firmly rejected this proposition, leading to tensions. The climax of their love saga unfolded during the infamous Naya Dor incident of 1957. Madhubala was cast opposite Dilip Sahab in B.R. Chopra's film Naya Dor. But when the prospect of a 40-day outdoor shoot in Bhopal arose, Ataullah Khan vehemently opposed it, insisting on filming in Bombay. 
this disagreement escalated into a heated dispute between Khan and B.R. Chopra, resulting in Madhubala's abrupt replacement by Vajanti Mala in the film Naya Daur. In a fit of fury, Ataullah Khan filed a lawsuit against B.R. Chopra seeking to halt the film's production. In response, Chopra initiated legal action against Madhubala and her father. During the court proceedings, Dilip Sahab testified in favour of B.R. Chopra, recognising the irrationality of Khan's stance and supporting the necessity of the outdoor shoot. This pivotal testimony marked the unravelling of Madhubala and Dilip Kumar's once-cherished romance, shattered by familial discord and professional strife. Following the loss of the legal battle, the rift between Madhubala and Dilip Kumar widened. Despite her lingering love for him, Madhubala remained hopeful but distraught, yearning for reconciliation between her beloved and her father. She set a condition for marriage. Dilip Sahab must apologize to Ataullah Khan. However, he staunchly refused. In a last ditch effort to salvage their relationship, Dilip Sahab proposed that he would only marry Madhubala if she severed all ties with her father. Yet, this ultimatum led to a heartbreaking impasse, ultimating marking the tragic end of their once promising romance. The friction between Madhubala and the Leap Sahab reached its peak during the filming of Mughle Azam. In a pivotal scene where Salim, portrayed by Dilip Sahab, slaps Anarkali, played by Madhubala, the emotional intensity on set became quite palpable. However, when filming this very scene, Dilip Sahab's emotions overwhelmed him and he inadvertently struck Madhubala with great force, plunging the set into a pregnant silence laden with discomfort and unspoken anguish. Come to think of it, had the court case never occurred, the course of history might have been altered and the romance between Madhubala and Dilip Sahab could have flourished. However, fate had other plans with Madhubala's father, Ataullah Khan, serving as the primary antagonist to their love story. Despite her shattered dreams, Madhubala threw herself into her work, seeking solace and distraction. Yet destiny intervened once more during the filming of Chalti Ka Naam Gadi and Half Ticket, where she crossed paths with the one and only Kishore Kumar. <laughs> Recently divorced, Kishore Kumar was captivated by Madhubala's charm and tirelessly vied for her attention. Madhubala reciprocated his affection and on October 9, 1960, they exchanged vows in a private ceremony. However, their marital bliss was short-lived. After the wedding, Kishore Kumar inexplicably distanced himself from Madhubala, ignoring her incessantly. Because behind the facade of the beloved actress, adored by the industry and millions of fans, lay a secret hidden from the world's prying eyes. Madhubala bore a burden hidden from the public eye. A diagnosis of ventricular septal defect, a congenital heart condition leaving a hole in her heart. Despite her ailment, she persevered, often falling ill on movie sets, enduring fainting spells and even coughing up blood. 
Her father, Ataullah Khan, shielded her condition from the world, fearing its impact on her career. Doctors advised rest and caution, but Madhubala, driven by her ambition, urged her father to ignore medical counsel and accept more film offers. For once in her life, Ataullah Khan was not the antagonist. His reluctance to expose Madhubala to outdoor shoots stemmed from concerns for her health. It was this very reason that led her to decline the Hollywood offers, preferring to keep her illness concealed. However, this secrecy exacted a toll on her relationships. As her health deteriorated, the filming of Mughal -e Azam exacerbated her suffering. A scene requiring her to be shackled in real chains left lasting scars on her body and exacerbated her illness. Despite seeking medical intervention, the limited advancements in science at the time offered no respite. Madhubala disclosed her medical condition to Kishore Kumar before she tied the knot with him. The couple sought medical consultation in London only to receive a heart-wrenching prognosis from doctors. Madhubala had a mere two years to live. This devastating revelation shattered Kishore Kumar's heart, leaving it fragmented into a million pieces. The tragic saga of Madhubala's final days unveils a poignant narrative of love, loss and loneliness. Despite moving in with Kishore Kumar's family in a bid for care, their relationship faltered amid frequent arguments. Retreating to a separate apartment, Madhubala found herself isolated with Kishore Kumar's sporadic visits offering little solace. As her health plummeted, she returned to her parents' home, battling debilitating symptoms and relying on constant medical support. Madhubala would often say, Mujhe zinda rehna hai. Mujhe marna nahi hai. Doctors kab is bimari ka ilaj nikalenge? Kishore Kumar's gestures of financial assistance and occasional visits were overshadowed by Madhubala's longing for his presence. With each passing day, her condition deteriorated, marked by incessant bleeding and the desperate plea for a cure. Even as Dilip Sahab, now married to Saira Banu, paid a visit, Madhubala gracefully acknowledged her fate, finding solid in Saira Banu's beauty and Dilip Sahab's happiness. Unke nasib mein wo thi. मैं नहीं पर वो बहुत खूबसूरत है साहब के लिए बहुत खुश हूं मैं एंड देन ऑन फेब्रुवरी 23 मधुबाला डिपार्टेड फ्रॉम दिस वर्ल्ड लीविंग बिहाइंड अ लेगेसी ऑफ अनफुलफिल्ड ड्रीम्स एंड अनटोल्ड पेन येट अमिड्स्ट ऑल दिस ग्रीफ लतीफ अ सिंबल ऑफ अ फ्लीटिंग चाइल्डहुड लव continued to honor her memory visiting her grave annually with a single rose stem madhubala's untimely demise at the tender age of 36 left a void in the hearts of millions forever immortalizing her as the indian equivalent of marilyn monroe despite her silent suffering she epitomized resilience radiating joy and warmth to those around her until her final breath As we bid farewell to Madhubala's heartbreaking tale, may her memory endure as a testament to her indomitable spirit and enduring legacy. If you found solace in this narrative, do share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more captivating stories. Until we meet again, may your days be filled with joy, love and warmth. Cheers.